Oh hey, I'm Mark, an art teacher, a professional artist, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you about my entire career path, starting back in the 90s when I first got started, to how I eventually became a senior artist working at Blizzard Entertainment, and then how I got to do what I'm doing today, basically living as a content creator and freelance artist. It's been a wild ride, and hopefully this retrospective is going to be insightful if you're also looking into the career of an artist. And if you're here for a tutorial, this might not be the video for you, but I've made sure to put down in the description below all the most popular recent video tutorials that I've released. So check them out. I'm sure it's going to be something in there that you'll fancy. But for everybody else, let's get started. All right, today we'll take a look at something that's been requested a lot, how I got started as an artist and what unfortunate, I mean, fortunate series of events unfolded before I started to first make pocket money with my art and eventually turned it into a full on career working in video games. Oh, and then how I got to become my own boss working as a content creator. Along the way, I also started a company, Cubrush.co, but I'll skip all of that to try and focus on the art and keep the video shorter. It's been a wild ride, a long <laughs> wild ride. I'm 34 now and I've been drawing since I was like four or five. Let's just say four so I can say that I've been making art for 30 years. Damn. Anyways, in this video, I'll take us through those 30 years, kind of going over my art as it improved over the years, as well as what was basically happening in my life at the time. So let's get this retrospective started. <laughs> We're back in 1990, I'm 4 or 5 years old, and for one reason or another, Minimark really found a love for art. My dad always had a bunch of discarded paper from his work, so I would flip it over and draw on the back of it, all day long, all day every day, I just couldn't get enough. I'd fill up entire sheets like these, and the same trend continued at school and art class, that was, uh, that was the best time. I was one of those kids that would, <laughs> would yell at the entire class to shut the hell up so I could hear what the teacher is saying. And I got a lot of positive feedback early on, probably thanks to the fact that I was drawing all the time at home. And it really solidified in my mind that, you know, this was kind of my thing. I was an artist. These drawings are all from that time and I'm just going to, well, let them play in the background here. From the age of 4 to 5 to 13 or, you know, the first year of high school, I'm from Montreal, Canada, so the schooling system is a little different there. Um, I just, I kept it up, so I kept practicing. I'm definitely more of an introvert, so of course, you know, I enjoyed hanging out with friends, but some of the most fun I had was while drawing, painting, or, you know, exploring different mediums of art. My mom would take uh, my brothers and I to the library, and I'd borrow a bunch of books about monsters and mythical creatures for inspiration. I was also really big into Dragon Ball and comics like, like Spawn and X-Men back then, so I would copy a lot of it, as you can see. Back then, careers in art were not as sexy as they are today, there really wasn't much, so even though I enjoyed art, my parents were always, you know, there to remind me that this might not be the best choice and that I should focus on science first, eventually get into a good college and, and you know, get a science degree before considering art more seriously. It's some sort of a backup plan. At least that's what my dad called it, but it was pretty much the only plan. Anyways, once I started high school, I think I was 13 years old, I was lucky enough to be accepted in an uh, accelerated program um, the school was offering. If you got into that program, you would basically learn all the same content, but in fewer classes. So we could take additional classes we normally wouldn't have the time for. And one of those was the computer class where I was introduced to Photoshop for the first time. Of course, I had dabbled a lot in MS Paint like a true nerd, but Photoshop like blew my mind. It was right around that time also that I discovered anime and got completely hooked. So that's where most of my inspiration came from the next couple of years. Once again, copying a lot. Later in high school, it just became even more obvious that I was going to do something related to art later. I wouldn't listen much in class and instead I'd fill up the, you know, the daily schedule book they would give us each year basically drawings on every page. And at the age of like 
14 through 16, I was really into building websites uh, about Dragon Ball using my, my noob Photoshop skills to create cool graphics, you know, for the sites. And uh, it's only at around 16 that I felt comfortable enough in Photoshop to, to try my hand at scanning and, and coloring one of my drawings digitally. For the first time, I had been browsing a bunch of forums about art and some of the guys there were doing that. And so, yeah, I had to try it for sure. It was just a bit of a, a bit of a struggle since I didn't have a tablet. So I had to rock the mouse for it all. And uh, yeah, all of these, by the way, were done with mouse help. Now that summer when I was 16, I got my first job packing water bottles at Costco, the night shift. My wor worst job of my life, but it paid pretty good, especially for, for a kid, you know. At the end of the summer, I was able to save up around 500 bucks and get myself a Wacom Intos 2, which was the top of the line back then. It took me a good month before um, I got used to the tablet, and even though I was struggling a lot at first, my speed quickly ramped up from then onwards, and I was pretty much always scanning and coloring my drawings in Photoshop. That year, I also got accepted to the best college for science, at least in my area. So, well, I went right into science as planned. That uh, did not go too well. I guess you really had to, to study to get good grades in college and uh, Young 17 year old me wasn't feeling it. I started to skip classes and eventually kind of just dropped out. They didn't even go to my final exams. I felt that felt pretty great though, but also what then? What do I do now? I think it just became very clear that the path I was on, which was, you know, to get a computer science degree and then specialize in video game art. That, that was a path that was recommended by a career counselor at school, by the way. Great job, buddy. But yeah, it didn't take me long to realize that just made no sense at all. And one that I quickly figured out would definitely not be working for me. So anyways, I was out of school and uh, decided to enroll into something else, something, something different. Fine arts at a different college. And maybe I have some Montreal people watching, but I went to Cégep du Vieux Montréal, which was kind of well known for their art program anyways. That was going to be the following year. So I still had some time to kill until then. My girlfriend's stepdad came to the rescue though, and I was able to go work for him, replacing one of his employees that I think was out on break for a couple of months, doing uh, like data entry. <laughs> that was another shitty job. Maybe worse than Costco actually, but uh, the fact that I didn't have to worry about homeworks all of a sudden was, was pretty amazing, especially for my art. That year, I joined this new website I had discovered called Deviant Art and started uploading art as, as frequently as I could. That was pretty fun. So by the end of my 17th year on this planet, I had uh, well just finished a data entry job and I had just started fine arts in college finally. My Deviant Art account had a few thousand followers at that point and I was quickly figuring out that there was actually a lot of money to be made in art. Why didn't I know this before? Why didn't anyone tell me? Because yeah, it's at that time that some people on Deviant Art started to ask if I was doing commissions, if I would draw their characters for them. And uh, hell yeah, making money with art, sign me up. So that's how I started, super cheap at first, but uh, but people kept asking, so you know, I kept it up for a couple more years after that. I think right before I turned 18, I had also applied for some freelance gigs on a job board I had found, and one of them miraculously hired me to color comics after losing their colorist after like the first issue. Somehow they saw my Devian art page and they were satisfied. But yeah, I contacted maybe like 15 people and failed before I got to that one, so anyways, it paid like $10 a page. I think the total was around 500 per book. And you can imagine that one single page didn't take me like an hour. It was definitely a lot more than that. So not an incredible amount of money, but hey. So there I was starting college for art while already making some good pocket change working professionally. Awesome. Now the art program there wasn't much help, unfortunately. So that would have probably turned out to be a waste of time, but I started to work on my commissions and like other small freelance gigs during class instead, make the best of it. I would quickly do the, the homeworks and projects to get them out of the way, and then I'd get back to working on the gigs. And then while in class drawing as usual, and I'm pretty sure it was an art history class, uh, sorry Melanie, my teacher then, even though it probably seemed like I didn't listen much, it was still one of my favorite classes. Anyways, <laughs> during one of those classes, I made this, uh, this drawing here. Some of you might be familiar with it, but yeah, look at that big hand, yikes. Anyways, I got really stoked about that one and turned it into a painting as soon as I got home. It took a long time, but it really felt like I leveled up with that one uh, once, I, once I got done with it. And of course, uploaded to my Deviant Arts and 
few days later, I think that's really the moment my career took off, or at least it felt like a big break because I got a daily deviation, which is awarded to you know, like a few pieces every day on Deviant Art. It was my first one, and suddenly a flood of new people found my portfolio. It was super exciting. Before, I would get like, I don't know, like 100, 150 favorites on my best pieces, which was already pretty good, but I had been, you know, doing this for a while now. But that one was in the thousands. It felt like winning the lottery. And I guess, you know, that really exp <laughs> explains a lot of my career luck. I just kept at it long enough, practicing and improving until I finally landed on a winning lottery ticket. That's really how I see it. But yeah, from then on, I wasn't going to waste all this new traffic I had to milk it, bruh. So I had time on my hands and uh, well, I really went full factory mode with my art where I'd crank out one big painting after another every week without stopping until my real, my real break, career-wise at least, landed on my lap. Amazingly, later that same year, I got an email from Imagine Effects, which is, a, you know, an art magazine, asking if I'd like to create a workshop for their 14th issue. I literally could not believe it. Even better, you know, it paid a lot more than coloring comic book pages for the amount of work required, especially. So yeah, I wrote up a workshop for it, my first ever tutorial. That got a lot more eyes on my art, understandably. And, and it was just a few months later, after my 19th birthday, that I got another email, but this time one asking if I'd like to do an art test for a game company in Montreal. Money! Now called um, Behavior Interactive. Of course, I took the test for the concept art position. Uh, I somehow passed it. Here was my test. Once again, luck involved, <laughs> all right? Passed it and then um, started to work 20 hours a week, mostly from home. So they were super cool and understanding, you know, that I was still in school. So I did most of the work from home and would only need to come in like on Fridays for team meetings. So yeah, imagine going to school for a job you already have. I was so dope, man. The hardest was probably just trying to keep my ego in check while at school. And then half a year later, I realized that I was probably kind of wasting my time in school, especially since I wasn't learning much at all. Dropped out and, uh, well, switched to being a concept artist full-time. I was a full-time professional artist. I thought I had made it. I was making okay money, you know, still living in my parents, so I saved all of it and uh, decided to buy an apartment. Pretty cheap, right by where I worked downtown. It was amazing. And it was cheap because, uh, well, the building wasn't built yet, so it was a project. So I worked at Behavior happily for two years, walking by my future home on the way to and from work, you know, the building getting bigger and bigger every week. Oh, I couldn't wait. My colleagues uh, were now some of my best friends and, uh, and life was good. I still didn't like the work I was doing there 100% though, so I would still stay late uh, and work on personal stuff many days out of the week, you know, keeping my DeviantArt accounts alive and well. It had served me well up until then by bringing a lot of opportunities, so I wasn't going to stop now. And well, Thanks to that, during those two years, I also got some more freelance gigs for art books, workshops, and to my surprise, Imagine Effects asked me to contribute to another of their issue right towards the end of my time at Behavior. And then there's one thing I didn't really mention, but along the way there, I had started to dabble in 3D. And then by the end of my time at Behavior, I was doing most of the concepts for the project and making a good chunk of the 3D assets too. All stuff that I learned on the job thanks to my coworkers. Anyways, I didn't know it yet, but everything would change again. And uh, well, my comfy life was about to be shaken up. It was one of those nice sunny summer days in Montreal. My friends from work and I went out to have lunch and I got an email notification on the way back to work. It was an email from an art recruiter at Blizzard Entertainment Den. Now it was a good friend of mine, shout out to you, Kenny asking if I'd like to do an art test. It was a weird one, like a hybrid test, 2D and 3D mixed together. But yeah, a test to join their new MMORPG team they had just started to hire for, AKA the team that would uh, that would make Overwatch. Of course, I calmly freaked the hell out. Uh, you know, I was a huge Blizzard fan then. You know, I had played Warcraft 1, 2, Diablo, Diablo 2, Starcraft, and I had spent hundreds of hours in World of Warcraft by that time. So this was like a dream come true. Now, long story short, they liked the test. Thankfully, this one right here, they flew me over to California, all expenses paid for an in-person interview. And uh, everything worked out. The biggest stress was the work visa since I was, you know, a dropout after all. <laughs> Didn't have any degree, but their lawyers worked their magic and made it happen somehow. A few weeks later, I was saying bye-bye to my apartment that I had yet to step foot in, saying bye-bye to family, to my awesome coworker bros, 
to my childhood friends, um, to my girlfriend then. It was like a new relationship, so it wasn't too big of a deal. And uh, moving to California, living on my own for the first time at the ripe old age of 22. It was pretty scary to be honest, but I could never let that opportunity pass by. And by the way, side note, before they sent me the offer, they asked how much I was making at Behavior and how much I was expecting to make at Blizzard. So I was making uh, right around $42,000 a year. Canadian at behavior. So then of course I bluffed and said I was making 80,000 and wanted 90,000 US dollars. <laughs> now they didn't give me that much as a base salary, but but with the bonuses, it actually ended up being slightly more. Anyways, moral of the story, always lie. Well, I don't know if it's a good moral, but whatever, let's just move on. Blizzard time. I spent a little over seven years there, five on the Overwatch team working on pre-prod and uh, the rest on Heroes of the Storm primarily and helped a little bit the StarCraft team. Now, I did mostly 3D characters while at Blizzard, with some 2D sprinkled in there. I started as a concept artist on the team for a few months, and just like at Behavior, my job kind of slowly shifted to 3D as we started to transition towards uh, production from pre-prod. So if anything, I'm really thankful that they let me switch because I feel it's helped keep my love for 2D art pretty strong, where I would still want to draw and paint when I got back home, you know, after a long day at work, never really losing the passion for it. And the only reason I say this is because now 3D feels a little bit more like a, like a job, maybe not as fun as it used to be. So during my time there, I not only worked with amazing people and amazing projects, but I also met my wife, who was an animator on World of Warcraft. Craft. Things moved pretty quickly, and right about when our daughter was born, like five days later, just kidding, that would be concerning, no, it was like a year and a half later, I was 26, I think, in 2013, um, is when there was a big change on the Overwatch team, where they restructured, aka scaled down a lot of the project and got rid of pretty much all the artists on the team. Pretty scary times. Thankfully, I just jumped ship on the Heroes team and, you know, avoided being laid off, like so many at the time. But uh, keep in mind that I was a new dad then, you know, on a work visa where if I lose my job, I get deported right away. So my panic level was slightly over 9,000. Of course, we got married a bit later, so that, that kind of solved the, the work visa issue, but job security was definitely still in my mind. Who knows, I might not survive the next round of layoffs. That never happened, thankfully, but guess what I started right around that time. Yeah, buddy, it felt like a good way to, you know, get a side hustle going just in case things turned sour at work. I thought YouTubers made bank, you know, like drove Lambo. So on my side, I had a solid following on DeviantArt already. So, you know, I got a good chunk of followers right off the bat. And, and thanks to that, that's how I started my YouTube journey. And that's how I was going to become a millionaire. <laughs> I posted a few videos and I was hooked. Good thing too, because I had to be hooked, seeing as I wasn't making any money off of YouTube after all. Aww. But yeah, I would have I would have quit real quick if I didn't enjoy it as much as I did and still do. Now, a year after starting YouTube, uh, our son was born. So my wife retired to stay home with the kids because uh, yeah, the price of daycare here is complete madness, which meant that at that time we were down to a single salary, my Blizzard salary. So the pressure was kind of on. It didn't take me too long to realize that YouTube, you know, wasn't going to be nearly enough long term to support my family. So that's when I started to work on like a different idea in parallel which was Q-Brush. So I worked on all that and my full-time work at Blizzard for about a year in parallel. And eventually I just retired to work on the business and YouTube full-time in 2016. And it was one day, exactly one day before I turned 30. Peace out, Blizzard. So I left on, on good terms, of course, but if I'm being honest, a big part of that decision was to avoid doing crunch all the time like uh, the Heroes team did. I never saw my kids, man, that was really shitty. But yeah, anyways, jumping to late 2017, so like a year and a half later, I announced Art School for Digital Artists, the full art education program that I was starting to work on now that the business was kind of on its way up and didn't need to be babied as much, you know, as the two years prior. So it took me two more years to complete building the core program, um, the program I completed last year, 2019. And since then, literally thousands of students have joined and kind of unexpectedly, it's uh, my main job now, <laughs> teaching art. Now, even after all this time, YouTube still makes me no money or basically no money, but 
Thankfully, it's brought the art school program and my other courses to some of you guys' attention. And thanks to you and the business, you know, QBrush doing pretty good, I've been able to transition from game dev to full-time content creator. It's been pretty awesome to get uh, back to 2D on my own terms, you know, and have kind of like more time to dedicate to it. I'm sure some of you have noticed that I've been a lot more active recently posting art. And by recently, I mean like the, the last year or so. And I really love my new life as an art teacher. Of course, I still work on the occasional freelance gig when it's something that I'm really interested in. All of it is a lot of work, but nothing I've done so far in my career has ever come close to being as fulfilling. So if anything, it feels like I'm working less, I think it's a good place to be. I also get to see my kids grow up every day at home, so that's dope. Yeah, that's it. That's the story so far, at least. Of course, I admitted a ton here. You know, it's not easy to cram 20 years in under 20 minutes, but my entire career, I've just kind of fumbled my way through and the only real constant was that I never stopped practicing or improving. I never stopped updating my portfolio and always kept pushing, even when I felt like I had made it, you know? I really believe that's the only thing that's made all the difference. Every artist I know has a vastly different story and I think the best you can do is to be prepared when the opportunity presents itself. Prepared by always trying to improve. Anyways, I doubt anyone will follow the exact same path, but hopefully some of this helped answer some of your questions. If you have any though, don't hesitate to ask down below. I always check every comment. Oh, and also quickly before we end the video, small disclaimer, of course, all the art that I saved is kind of like the good stuff. Everything that was garbage, well, that's where I ended up. So don't think that everything you saw was kind of like my average level. That was just me at my best at any given time. And, uh, on that note, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up. It helps me reach out more people and of course, keep making more videos and um, yeah, keep making art. Never stop or else.